Hello world, Apple is about to start automatically scanning your iPhone's photo library to see if you have any illegal pictures. And yet more ransomware drama, a disgruntled affiliate of the Conti ransomware group has leaked the gang's infamous playbook. That's in today's episode of The Week Web, where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. From next month, Apple will start automatically scanning all the photos stored on your iPhone for instances of abuse imagery involving minors. This is pretty big news coming from a company which bills itself as having privacy at the heart of its values. Apple taking the age old think of the children stance to justify rolling back privacy has pissed off a hell of a lot of people. Whilst on the face of it, hunting down pedos is a great idea. There are some critical flaws in this plan which threaten the privacy of all of us. Now, from here on out, I'm going to refer to the type of content Apple is hunting via their own initialism of CSAM, if only to avoid this video being put on a list. So how does this work? Well, Apple has teamed up with child protection organizations to procure a library of many thousands of these CSAM images. Apple has run all of these pictures through an advanced hashing function, producing a number for each which identifies the image. All these thousands of hashes will be stored locally on your iPhone or iPad. Whenever a photo stored on your phone is uploaded to iCloud, your iOS device will check it against the local library of hashes. If a match is found, then a variable, let's call it a pedo score, on your phone is incremented. If a device's pedo score breaches a certain threshold, then the offending photos will be sent to Apple to manually verify, at which point the offender will be locked out of their accounts and law enforcement will be notified. Apple's clever hashing algorithm takes into account cropping of photos and degradation of quality due to encoding, so it should be quite effective. Apple claims their method of detecting known CSAM is designed with user privacy in mind. Is this true? Kind of, I suppose, but also not really. The image scanning is done locally on your phone, so it's not like this is being computed on some central server potentially run by the NSA. In addition, a pedo score needs to rise above a certain threshold before your iPhone even notifies Apple. A single image isn't enough to do it, apparently. Also, photos are only being compared to a library of pre-existing CSAM material. It's not like Apple is using some advanced AI to figure out if any random image you take with your phone is sus. Also, according to the fruity overlord, the system has an extremely high level of accuracy and ensures less than one in one trillion chance per year of incorrectly flagging a given account. Anyway, there's my devil's advocacy out of the way. Let's get to the reasons why you might not want to be on board with this. The fact that Apple wants to nab kitty fiddlers isn't the problem. If that was the only variable here, no one would take issue with this plan. The issue is the mere fact that this type of technology is being deployed, regardless of the justification. Whilst currently it is only being used to detect CSAM images, it would not be rocket science. In fact, it would be quite simple to repurpose this tech and use it to detect anti-government imagery, photos relating to certain ideologies, and so on. And we would never know, because remember, only hashes corresponding to the offending imagery are stored locally on your device. It would be impossible to ascertain if these hashes relate to CSAM or something else. To make matters even worse, Apple isn't immune from FBI interference. One very interesting example of this is evident in a Reuters report from last year, which describes how Apple plans to offer end-to-end -end encryption for data stored in iCloud, as whilst currently user data stored in iCloud is encrypted, Apple themselves hold the keys. Enabling end-to-end -end encryption would have made it impossible for law enforcement and other government agencies to access your files, as you would be the only one with those precious decryption keys. However, after several secret meetings with the FBI, Apple apparently backtracked, canning the idea. Yet another issue caused by this whole charade is that if there's one thing we've learned in the tech world, once Apple sets a precedent, all the other tech giants listen and tend to adopt it. For example, getting rid of the headphone jack was just a crazy thing Apple did. Until two years passed and a bunch of other phone manufacturers hopped on the bandwagon, even the ones which initially made fun of the idea. There is the question of whether this would be all that effective. After all, pedos also read the news. They could simply stop using iPhones, leaving the rest of us having to deal with this kind of surveillance. And just a heads up, randomly switching to Android in the next couple of weeks is about to become very, very sus. From as early as next month, this feature is going to be enabled on all iOS devices, though only on American registered products for the time being. Whether this is even possible to implement in Europe due to stricter privacy laws remains to be seen. I ran a poll on Instagram to gauge your guys' views on all of this. You should totally follow me for behind the scenes stuff. I am at Jonty. You guys have rather split, 34, 70 against. 
Let's get a debate going in the comments. Are you up in arms over Apple's new feature, or do you think this is a necessary evil? Apple have published a blog post announcing their plans, as well as a technical summary which explains how this will be implemented. Though this is only a very high-level explanation, it isn't open source, of course. By using an iPhone from here on out, you are trusting that this system is secure and won't be exploited. A disgruntled affiliate of the Conti ransomware gang has turned on the group and has leaked a treasure trove of data which the gang used to train up new recruits. Conti is described as one of the most ruthless ransomware gangs. Whilst many groups have a quasi-code of ethics, claiming they won't go after hospitals, government departments, critical infrastructure, and so on, Conti bucks the trend and has been observed attacking 911 dispatch carriers, emergency medical services, and even law enforcement agencies. Conti, like virtually all other ransoming rapscallions, operates an affiliate program, in which the affiliate is responsible for spreading the malware, gaining that initial infection, for which they are awarded usually a 70% cut of any ransom paid, whereas Conti themselves handle the actual ransomware development. In this case, it would seem our malcontented affiliate here was hacked off over not being paid his fair share. Bleeping Computer published a screenshot of his post on an unnamed Russian cybercrime forum. I'm assuming this was translated from Russian, as I can't make much sense of it. He seems to have gone on a tirade about how the Conti gang took his share of the spoils and divvied it up between themselves following which he leaked the IP addresses Conti uses for their Cobalt Strike command and control servers, Cobalt Strike being a legit pen testing tool made for professionals, which was leaked on GitHub a while back. Since then, it's become the industry standard for cyber crooks intent on maintaining control of victim PCs. Our affiliate, one Mr. HDD Drive, went on to post 111 megabytes of files, including hacking tools, manuals written in Russian, training material, and help documents that are allegedly provided to affiliates when performing Conti ransomware attacks. Now, I can't read Russian, but Vitaly Kremers, CEO of Advanced Intelligence, told Bleeping Computer that, by and large, it is the holy grail of the Pentester operation behind the Conti ransomware. It is essentially a whole training package of materials, which allows new Pentester ransomware operators to level up their skills for ransomware step by step. In the same way that a company might keep manuals for new employees on how to do certain tasks, this is essentially that. This leak shows just how vulnerable ransomware gangs are, as all it takes is one peeved off affiliate to spill the gang's secrets. In order to tempt cybercrime scoundrels to rat out their bosses, as Bleeping Computer goes on to explain, the US government is offering up to a $10 million reward for details that can help identify and locate any person that acts on behalf of a foreign government in malicious cyber operations. Now, of course, ransomware isn't state-operated. Usually, save for some notable exceptions, North Korea comes to mind. The US Department of State has set up a dark web site where you can submit tips anonymously. Upon making a submission, you're given a code name, which acts as a kind of password so you can further communicate with agents on return visits. In addition, the $10 million ransom has the option of being paid out in cryptocurrency, making it easier for cybercrime operators with a grudge to stab their associates in the back. If you enjoy this kind of video, make sure to help me out by tickling the like button for YouTube AI, as well as turning on those sub notifications. If you're looking for something to watch next, go check out my previous video on how a hacker group with the most amazing name ever, Imperial Kitten, catfished employees of Western defense contractors. If you get a lot of value from this series of videos, do consider becoming a channel member. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.